I think that that intellectual connection is really powerful simply because I think a lot of times people make assessments about people based on their sexual attraction or their immediate spark of flirting. And flirting is not a, not a normal conversation. It's a fun conversation, but it's not the everyday conversation of, you know, honey, can you get some more milk when you go out? I need I some think, cream for my bunions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More to the point, yes. <laughs> you got it. And I think that if you have that that creative connection, if there are ways that the two of you really spark each other mentally and the conversations are really interesting and fascinating, you have a world of opportunity and potential for that to be a continued journey. Because I find that people who are very interesting intellectually are usually people who are still very curious. And just like a child is curious when they're very young and they were constantly soaking up new learning, some adults get to adulthood and especially when they marry, they want to get their needs met in the marriage. They want to get the food that they need from the marriage. And the truth is you have to feed you. You know, you can't expect another person to complete you. You have to remain an individual who continues growing. So that intellectual curiosity is, is part of that. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're taking on a new avocation, you know, decided to study nature photography or you've decided to, John took up a brand new career at 46. He became a writer. And now he had been writing prior to that. He had worked for magazines. He'd been the editor-in-chief of magazines. So he'd editor. been a writer, but he'd been an editor and a writer. He decided to write books. He decided to write stories. He decided to write parables. And this was a whole brand new track for him. So there was a lot to talk about, a lot. And I'm published multiple times over in, in psychology circles. And so I, you know, had my own thoughts on writing and what constitutes great writing. And I had studied creative writing for years in college. So there you know, the journey just continues. It, there's always something new and fascinating to find. If your partner continues to grow, they continue to have a spark that's very interesting to explore. And it, it gives you new territory. There's a great line in our book that um, every person is an unexplored continent. There's always something new to find. And that's actually true when you have intellectual curiosity, but also just curiosity about getting to know the heart of how they feel the things that have hurt them in their life. And, you know, earlier I said that if you don't come to some wholeness in yourself, you can't bring it to your marriage. But that doesn't mean, and I would say a good 80% of marriages start without one party or both parties feeling sure. that sense of completion and wholeness and having healed some of their deeper issues. But if there's compassion in the marriage, if there's the ability to have emotional intelligence and express that, to each other by listening, then there's a lot of room for healing. Marriage by itself can be a very healing journey mm. if both parties remain open. Man, there's so much good stuff to unpack in that, in, in your comment. Thank you so much for sharing. The first image that I had pop into my head is what Dr. John Gottman talks a lot about with the, with the love maps and this idea of your partner's an unexplored continent. And I think about, so my wife and I recently moved to Costa Rica for a year. We've been here for about six months and it's been this amazing adventure. But what I found and what kind of stood out to me listening to you is when you plant yourself in a, a home, your first goal is to make yourself feel comfortable. And so we found out where we're going to do our grocery shopping. We found out like where, what direction we need to go to get to the beach. And even though we're in this, we're surrounded by all this newness and all of this jungle and adventures and cool things, we kind of live our lives along these same routes. We just kind of follow the same path every day and we don't get out and explore as much as we probably could or should to take advantage of all of the amazing newness around us. And I think we do the same thing in our relationships where we tread the same path. We have the same conversation and we just assume because we know this small collection of facts about our partner, about their interests and their pet peeves and, and things like that, that we know them, but we forget that they, there's so much that goes unexplored. And when you tap into that natural curiosity, maybe it's not natural for some people, but tap into our curiosity, um, it really can bring something unique and amazing to the relationship over and over and over again as you explore your partner. 
Such a, such a cool, I love that continent example. Did you enjoy this clip? If so, you can check out the entire conversation right here. And if you learned something valuable, I hope I was able to earn your subscription today.